Good morning. Uh, we're going to talk about something we call hybrid messaging in this presentation. Not to be confused with hybrid cloud. In this presentation, we're actually going to talk about various deployment models for the message bus control plane that you can um, use with OpenStack. And this is everybody's thinking, you know, Rabbit. This is Rabbit. Everybody knows Rabbit, but there are also other technologies that we're bringing forward that differ from Rabbit and complement it. And we'll be talking about those things today. Okay, so quick introduction. Uh, my name's Ken Giusti. Um, I'm a member of the Apache Cupid project, and I'm also a developer in Oslo Messaging. Uh, and I work for Red Hat. Mark Wagner. I work for Red Hat as well. I'm in the performance and scale group. Um, I'm basically a performance engineer at Red Hat. All right, so let's, uh, let's get started. So this is a lot of information um, involved around this. We have other presentations if you're interested in, in looking at spending a little more time uh, on this topic. But um, we're going to cover this at a pretty high level. Uh, so we're going to focus around the Oslo messaging library. That is the library that is used to provide RPC notification services, basically the traffic you see going across Rabbit. Uh, and then we're going to talk about various we call backend. That's the message, messaging implementation, the message bus. You'll probably see me, hear me use that term. And we're going to describe what we call hybrid messaging. Uh, and then we're going to talk about these other technologies that are supported in Oslo messaging um, and show some testing that we've done to kind of give you a sense of how these different technologies perform. And we'll talk about future plans. All right. So. Oslo messaging. <clears throat> Basically, when you see stuff go through Rabbit, it's via Oslo messaging. Oslo, the Oslo project, of which Oslo messaging is a part, is a uh, collection of utilities that are shared amongst the projects of OpenStack. It's kind of like a you know, library to do different things so we don't keep reinventing the wheel. And the part that we're talking about today is called Oslo messaging. And it provides high level abstractions for a couple of very common messaging Para, um, patterns, one being remote procedure call, and another one we call notifications. Notifications are like eventing uh, or logging, uh, except at the message level. And we'll talk a little bit more about these in a second. But as I had, as I previously described, that this is, provides an abstraction to the project. So the projects aren't speaking directly to Rabbit via Rabbit APIs. They are speaking to Rabbit via Oslo messaging at a high level. So a little bit about those, these services. As I said, notification is about eventing. Think of like logging. It's, uh, there are two players in this pattern. There is the thing that does the eventing. We call that the notifier. And the thing that does the consumption of these events and processes them. We call that the listener. OK? Now, this pattern is loosely coupled in time. What do I mean about that? I mean that the notifier is asynchronously firing off these events. And all it cares about is that the message bus receives events, and that is rabbit queue them up. It doesn't get any feedback of when they're consumed, if they're consumed ever. OK, so these are temporally separate. Um, I and mean, that's separate from the server, which can come on at any time, even after the caller has even exited, and, and consume these messages at a later point in time. So they're temporally separate. They don't depend on both parties being there to complete the transaction. Okay, that requires queuing. All right, so we think of Rabbit, we talk about the queue. This is a pattern that requires that type of intermediary to store the message until the listener comes and pulls it off. Remote procedure call is quite a different pattern than this. It's more synchronous, right? You have a client that makes a request of a server by sending it a message. The server processes that request and returns a result. The client has to be waiting for that server. The server has to be present for this transaction to complete. So we're talking about something that is tightly coupled. The two parties have to be present. You'll notice I didn't use the word queue in describing this model. We'll get to that in a second. 
So if we kind of peel back the covers on what's going on with Rabbit and notifications, what we see is a pretty much a standard flow of messages through our queue, right? We have these notify clients that are firing off events, they're getting acknowledgements from the message bus from Rabbit that's saying, yeah, I got this message, I put it on a queue, you can go off and do whatever else you want to do. And then at any time, the notification listeners can come in and consume them uh, from that queue. So it's a unidirectional flow through a queue, and it's asynchronous, right? Perfect. Bro um, brokers do this very well. That's what they're designed to do. However, if we look at how we implement RPC today using Rabbit or any broker, CupidD, ActiveMQ, the RPC transaction takes place across four discrete transfers of ownership of that message. Remember I said that notification hands it to the bus and then, you know, the bus says, I got it, don't worry about it, I'll take it from here. That has to happen four times synchronously for an RPC, per RPC call for the RPC to, to, to complete, all right? So the RPC client has to issue its request, get it queued up, and at the point the broker says, I got it, the RPC client can't do anything really at this point. It's still pending on that reply, all right? So the message goes through the queue. The RPC server takes it, says the broker, I've got this, you can get rid of it now, processes it, sticks it back on a different queue. Notice we have to use two queues here, right? So double the resources for each client, potentially and the RPC client then will consume it off. Hopefully it's still there. If the RPC server isn't there, what happens? You get a backup on your queue. Messages the state, that's the thing. The broker is now containing state, and that state can go stale. If the RPC server isn't there, the messages still remain. Same thing with the replies. If the client dies, you have what's called an orphan queue with orphan messages. Again, the broker is maintaining state in what is essentially a pretty lightweight stateless transition here. And there's this artificial barrier because they're not communicating directly, the server and the client. It would be much better if we got rid of the queues and we did something like this, right? The RPC client could communicate directly, whether through a proxy or you know, through, through TCP, with the server and get the response directly back, right? That way the endpoints maintain the state. They know when the messages have been consumed and they know when they can release the state, not have to retransmit, or if they do have to retransmit, they will know at least that the message didn't get there, get a negative acknowledgement from the message bus, okay? You can't do this with a broker, but you can with other messaging technologies. There are technologies out there, protocols, that don't require queues. You can still use queues with them, but they don't require it. They support peer-to-peer -peer communication paths. And we support that in Oslo Messaging. Here's a kind of a simplified, layered look at the components within Oslo Messaging. All right, what you see here is, I wanna highlight this, the RPC service and the notification service, right, these abstractions, they're basically separate, right? They share some shared infrastructure, but the APIs are separate and their operations are separate. What they do share is the transport. That's where the logic that's specific to the message bus technology is contained, it's a driver, right? So we have calls to the Kombu library for Rabbit in this transport. And of course it connects directly to the message bus. Well, since I think about Mataka, I think, we've had the ability to do this. You can use dedicated transports for each service, a notification transfer for notifications, RPC transport for RPC now. Technically, they could be talking to the same bus, but that really doesn't add as much value. We've enhanced the API for the projects to be able to support this. The projects used to just allocate a transport and use it for both. Now, optionally, they can allocate a transfer per service, which enables this. An example change of the configuration that is supported is we've added this new uh, Oslo messaging notifications, let's see if I don't blind myself. <laughs> Oslo messaging notifications config item, where you define a secondary transport URL, talking to the message bus, this is the address of the message bus with the user credentials. Um, and the original URL is, is still maintained, it's a little quirky, we need to add an RPC URL here, we'll be doing that in the future, but you can add one specific to notifications and if you constrain yourself to RPC, you can have two different transports, all right? So what does that give us? Well, right now we're con 
this is what we're used to, right? We're used to notification and RPCs just being handled by the same broker or the cluster, right? As I said, RPC traffic is not very efficient when it's passed through a queue. So let's do this, right? Let's, let's have a broker cluster dedicated to RPC and a broker cluster dedicated to notifications. And there's some value in this, but it still doesn't solve the kind of messiness of queue-based RPC, well, in, inefficiency. This is hybrid messaging. Using a broker cluster, using Rabbit for notifications, because that's what Rabbit does well. Using a different Oslo messaging transport, different messaging technology that does point to point for RPC, and it can do it in much more efficiently. So it's about using the right tool for the right job. All right, notifications, you want to be able to store them. And if, it's, if you're doing something like billing or something critical, you don't want to drop them or you, you want to try very hard not to drop them. So you turn on things like queue mirroring. You turn on persistence. This slows down. It has a performance impact that if it's applied to RPC, it's a complete waste of time. You don't want to persist RPC messages. They're temporary, right? What you'd rather do is tune each potential, each backend you're using to the kind of traffic pattern it's taking. But there's also kind of a more longer term, and I'm gonna talk about this a bit, kind of longer term, um, more, I think it's gonna be important to like the NFE space and larger clouds is that we no longer have to use the centralized broker, the hub and spoke deployment model. We can now use a distributed architecture, right? And you're not gonna to have to have multiple rabbits under your cloud, like on a cells kind of configuration, talking to each other and keeping that location. There, is other there are other protocols and other tools out there that will do that automatically as part of their functioning. So we're gonna talk about uh, two alternative messaging transport transports used that are supported by Oslo messaging. One is based on zero MQ. The other one is based on the existing AMQP10 protocol transport, the stuff that people have been using off and on with Cupid D. But we're not saying talk to Cupid D. We've got a broker, Rabbit works fine. What we're talking about is a new technology called the dispatch router, a lightweight switch, and we'll talk about this in a second, that provides that kind of point-to-point -point semantics. Uh, I also wanted to mention there's an experimental driver. It's not conducive to the pattern I'm showing, but it's a notifications only driver. Its intent is perhaps providing the ability to do more scaling. It's an experiment using the Kafka distributed streaming service, right? So this is different in that instead of using Rabbit for notifications, you could use Kafka, but that's still under development. So let's talk about zero MQ. Zero MQ is a protocol. Zero MQ, the zero in zero MQ supposedly stands for zero brokers um, or zero overhead, depending on who you talk to. The zero MQ protocol is a very lightweight protocol that's built directly over TCP, and it uses TCP's routing capabilities to communicate between two parties. It is a point-to-point -point connect a protocol. You have to have a TCP connection between the two parties, okay? This is gonna give you the lowest amount of overhead, the fastest latency um, of any of the solutions I'm gonna to talk to today. However, um, as you can see on the left-hand side, as you add clients and servers, you start increasing the number of TCP connections kind of dramatically. So to help solve with that, the zero MQ um, driver has a, an additional component, it's a proxy, that it uses as a, con a connection concentrator. Now the deployer's guide describes when to use this, and it's kind of roughly rule of thumb, when you start getting above a high 100 uh, nodes, um, then you might have to consider using the proxy. And the proxy also supplies broadcast, because it's kind of difficult to do broadcast in this manner. There's also a, a matchmaker service using Redis that does the mapping from message topics, message addresses to the actual hosts that uh, service those messages, right? So there's a few components here, and there's a bump on the wire, but this is direct. There's no queues involved, and it can be in the left-hand side, it can be extremely quick in terms of transfers. Uh, I recommend looking at the deployer's guide uh, if you have any interest in playing with this. Uh, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about, this one's a little near and dear to my heart because I do work with Cupid. Uh, the message router is, it's not about being point to point. It, it really is a solution for high availability. 
high availability due to distribution. Think of an internet, think of the internet, think of routers, internet routers, right? The internet is run by the intelligence of those routers determining where the addresses land and where consumers and producers, if you will, for message terms, live, right? And they're connected in a mesh or redundant configuration. So if you put a bullet through the head of one of them, it recovers automatically for you. The clients don't have to do any work, right? This is the same thing the message router does. It's a fast message switch. It's like an IP router, but it's switching at the message level. It's looking at message addresses and finding the clients and servers in terms of where it does, where, where they go. So all the intelligence is in this network. Um, and it is stateless, like I said. You can purposely destroy one of these things if you've built up a redundancy in your mesh there will be failover. You can see with the dotted lines, I'm kind of highlighting that. Um, we did an entire presentation on this in Barcelona in a deep dive and talked about the management tools and things like that. I highly recommend if you're interested in using this to watch that video. And there's also a deploys guide if you want to play with it, and it's got DevStack support, so you can use it in DevStack. So just a quick overview of what also messaging supports, right? There's Rambu, uh, the Rambu. Mm. This rabbit using the Kombu API, and that's the rabbit MQ server, the stuff we all know, does RPC and notifications. There's AMQP10 and ZMQ, which primarily RPC, although you could technically run notifications over it. However, as we know, the listener has to be present or those messages will get dropped. Uh, and then there's Kafka, which is purely notification, experimental, and you know, kind of shows a, 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 a different tact on, on queuing uh, messages. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, we, uh, Mark had run some tests with the objective of benchmarking the effect or the, the, the throughput of RPC based on queuing and based on direct. Now what we're using here is a tool called the Oslo Messaging Benchmark Tool. As I said, I'm a developer in Oslo Messaging and I implemented most of the AMQP1 driver. Uh, I had to build a tool that would test a distributed network of routers running Oslo messaging. So this tool is for that. This tool does not simulate an open stack project flow. It's much more punishing than this. This is a stress tool. This is a load tool. I use this to break the system. I use this to throw traffic through Oslo messaging uh, in cases where I can try destroying nodes, it's observing failover under load, things like that. So you're not gonna see these levels in a typical open stack cloud, but we're pushing it to the point where you can see that there is definitely a difference in the two approaches to RPC. Um, think of it as the will it blend tool of Oslo messaging. Um, right now, the test scenarios, uh, we've just run them between Rabbit and the AMQ Cupid messaging uh, router, uh, just for lack of time and resources. Uh, we wanna do more as we go on. Uh, and like I said, it's not a true OpenStack pattern flow. You couldn't produce this kind of load using an OpenStack um, deployment, I don't think. I don't know anybody who has. If they have, I definitely want to talk to you. Um, so we had to play some leeway in, in, the, in the number of notification messages service versus the RPC and uh, producer consumer ratios. So we can distribute consumers and producers throughout the message bus, payload size, things like that. And uh, when we did this test, we tested single instances. We didn't use a rabbit cluster. We didn't use a mesh. We just had in situ a broker, rabbit broker, and a um, message switch router, yep. Cupid message router. And uh, with that, I'm gonna turn over the podium to my friend here, Mark, to explain what he saw. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome, Mark. <clears throat> So as Ken mentioned, the, the scenarios before, um, I'll run through them real quick here. The first scenario is a single broker backend. Um, so it's single machine, one instance of Rabbit running. Um, the message assumptions, you know, the RPC to notify traffic, we said 50-50. Um, producers and consumers, based on the tool, we have uh, two producers for every consumer, and that's more just to keep the tool loaded the way it was written. And we use the payload size of 1K. Scenario two is basically the same thing, but we, we make the message durable, um, which means they're all gonna get written to disk. And this is what you'd really wanna do for notifications, so that if your broker goes down for some reason, it's not lost just in the memory, it, it's stored on disk, and when it comes back, uh, if you're using notifications for things like billing and all, that, that data is important. So that was the second test. 
Third test is we separated. We put Rabbit on one machine. Um, well, we actually, for third test, we put Rabbit on two separate machines. One was for notification, where we kept it durable. Um, and the second was non-durable RPCs through Rabbit. And we'll compare some data here. Um, graph on the left is latencies, and you can see that the tool would measure throughput and latencies. And you can see, um, first problem we had is when it's all on a single box, we couldn't run as many clients. It, the test would just become unreliable and, and fail. Um, but you can see that Rabbit, um, the latencies go up as, as the number of clients increase. And then for throughput, uh, again, this is for just notifications. You can see the blue line is when Rabbit's on, on its own machine. Just for notifications, you can see you're getting, uh, I think it was about 18,000 calls per second for single. Um, and then the hybrid durable, you actually got better than the, um, wait a minute here, sorry. Oh, for the single host, the red line at the bottom, you can see you, you're splitting time between RPCs and um, notifications, so the red line is pretty low for throughput. The yellow line is when we split and ra um, the RPCs are going through another machine, you can see the improvement there. For the RPC calls, you see the same thing. The, the most interesting things here are the blue line um, for latency just goes straight up through the roof. So basically, rabbit for RPC calls, uh, the latencies kill you as you scale. Um, and you'll see the same thing for, our, um, for the rates as you're going, you know, they all decrease as you go. So the fourth scenario was basically the same as the third, but we switched out RabbitMQ on the RPC server, um, and we put in the QD router. The system tunings were the same. We just changed things to allow a lot of connections, things like that, um, at the kernel level. We didn't tune either product. Um, and so we're using direct, direct messaging at, that Ken talked about um, and the broker backend. And for this test, it didn't really matter since the broker was on a completely different machine, so we didn't actually run the notification test for this. We just did straight RPC calls because they were going to a distinct machine. So the blue line on top is QD router. Uh, you can see we got up upwards of 33, 34,000 messages, calls per second. And remember that a call for the tool, it sends it through the router and then the client echoes the whole call back. So it's really, you know, a lot of messages going through there. And this is one call is, is the complete round trip. You can see that Rabbit, um, you know, decayed as it, as it got loaded. Then when we switch to the latencies, you can see the QD router just stays pretty much flat for latency. Um, it doesn't, it increases a little bit, but compared to Rabbit, it, um, you know, stays really low. And then the final comparison here, you can see all, all the graphs put together. Um, so to cover them all, but you can, you know, the latencies of um, QD router, you know, really stand out as well as the throughput. And the final graph that I have is just CPU utilization. Um, in Rabbit, uses more CPU, uh, even though it's doing about a third of the bandwidth. And I know, um, as I said, I didn't tune any of these, and I work on the performance and scale of the router, and I know I can tune this so I get higher throughput and lower CPU utilization if I actually tuned it but I wanted to do a fair comparison. So next steps, you wanna handle yeah, that? Yeah, sure, Sorry about that. Thank you, Mark. Um, so the next steps. Um, as I mentioned before, there is a DevSec plugin that, that supports a Cupid hybrid mode where it talks to RabbitMQ for notifications and a single instance of the dispatch router for RPC. Uh, there's also a ZMQ DevStack plugin, but I don't believe that supports hybrid at this point. It's something for you guys to play with if you'd like, you folks. Uh, but uh, also, we're trying to educate developers uh, more to not think of 
messaging as rapid, but think at the high level, right? Think of the patterns that also messaging provides you. And more importantly, make sure that your code does allow the separation, does utilize get notification transport and the soon to be uh, included get RPC transport, right? So people, folks can deploy this um, with ease. Uh, and of course, we need people in also messaging. I'll put my also messaging hat on. We, we've got these other interesting technologies we're working on. And if you sign, find any of them interesting, please want to pitch in, please just do it. Just come on in and start playing. We can definitely use the help. Uh, going forward, the CI checks. Um, I've got a, actually a, a patch and project for the OpenStack upstream CI checks to add a Cupid hybrid mode uh, gating test for the also messaging test. They're also being used, I think, by by heat, too. They're doing a, what is it, like a neutron integration, or is it a, just a Tempest? Something, I think it's a Tempest-based test. Um, we'd like to test and measure additional hybrid scenarios, and uh, we've done some work on Triple O to kind of add. It's a lot of work when you consider that most of this stuff, and this actually appealed to the developers, too. Most of this stuff, uh, the Triple O's and the, the other deployment tools, hard code rabbit everywhere, right? So if you want to do something like ZMQ, you have to undo all that, right? You, you've got to take special steps. We're doing a lot of work in that area in Triple O, and uh, should be possible to deploy at least uh, the hybrid back backend um, fairly soon. So that's that's all I had. Um, oops, Are there any questions? Okay, so first of all, very good talk. Thank you for that. Um, yes, I do have a question. So have you considered, or did you look at using Envoy from Lyft as the message? Envoy? Envoy, yes. No. Any reason no. for that? Would it not be suitable? Or not, be... Uh, I wasn't aware of that. What is Envoy? <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> well, they've open sourced it recently from what I recall, and it's like a distributed message routing system, which is gaining quite a bit of traction, so I was that, just that's, wondering. No, well, these are messaging systems that are, these are messaging uh, technologies that are supported by the Oslo Messaging Library. And is that supported by Oslo Messaging? Well, I'm pretty sure it is not. So yeah. uh, basically it will have to come as a driver to Oslo Messaging. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, so these tests were based on Mos Oslo Messaging, so we sure. couldn't use any backlink. But th that's an interesting point if you, if you know of developers or people interested in kind of adding that capability to Oslo Messaging. It's certainly something that you should come to the community and the IRC meetings, also IRC meetings, which are on Monday to UTC, and propose it yeah. if okay. you're interested in developing that stuff. All right, thanks. Sounds cool. Thank you. Question. Thanks a lot. So, with the split that you described that came in Mitaka and Oslo to have like two mechanisms for the transport. Um, is this something that you need from the various projects in order to use that, or is that already yes. available everywhere? Yes, that's, it has to be adopted by the projects. And right? what's the status of this? Well, um, we've shaken out most of the problems, but um, as we add these CI tests, specifically I called it out, we have to add more CI tests to get more coverage um, to ensure that's happening uh, going forward so people don't break these things. And we have to put more enforcement and also messaging. So it's kind of a gradual thing. Uh, if you find a project that isn't doing this, or this is broken, that's a bug, <laughs> then we have to raise it and fix it. Right. Second question, like how much of this you would say is like production quality already? So if I okay. want to like set this up now, say for my Neutron uh, Rabbit MQ cluster that gives me headaches from time to time because we have quite a large number of nodes, is it something that where you would say, okay, this is already like production quality, or would you say like be rather careful and try it out and, and let us know I, if you hit I, some limits? Or... I am very conservative, right? Yeah. And we, to be honest, there are human decades of time, cumulative time, getting rabbit tuned and working. Remember how many problems were initially when we had rabbit back in Kilo and all these things. These have not been tested to that level. Right. Okay. So I'd say developer ready, definitely. Uh, CI test full testing, but in production, you probably want to play with it first. Um, so just to speak on behalf of the drivers, we, we have some developers that were working on the ZMQ stuff and got it you know, developer ready. We're looking for more volunteers there because there's been some movement around uh, supported uh, people supporting that driver. 
Um, the AMQ10 driver has been in there for like three years now. I support it, Andy supports it. Uh, so the developers are there, and we also work on this Cupid project separate from OpenStack, and it is being used actually in production, this, this Cupid dispatch router, um, by a couple of different companies. And, right. and it just went GA. So. And it went GA, well, okay, we'll talk about Red Hat. Okay, I'm putting my Red Hat on. <laughs> it is called Interconnect, and it's a product from Red Hat. Okay. So the, 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 probably the, the biggest risk would be the driver itself. Right. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Hi. Um, if you use uh, you know, RabbitMQ, it already has good support for secure interfaces. Yes. Like if you have to really uh, you know, secure your uh, messaging. But on the other hand, if you try to use a zero MQ, uh, although it's low latency, but I don't see any clear path to the security. Uh, do, you, do you know of any alternatives? With that level of latency, at the same time, it can have a secure messaging? Well, um, yes, good point. Thank you. I totally forgot about the ZMQ situation, but the security, yeah, that there's limited support at this time. Because we've got work items, and we're looking for people to help with that. Um, I could speak to the Cupid Dispatch router. It does support SSL. It supports client authentication via SSL. It supports SASL and Kerberos. Uh, so that's a low latency, um, secure solution. Right. Thank you. Hi. Uh, in your implementation, uh, you introduce a uh, new entity, the, the, sorry, uh, the router one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my question is, uh, can we go with something that is more P2P-like and where you have um, as much router that you have a client and server. So the idea to go a little bit further. Or why do you shoot that router entity? Uh, I, think I, I don't think I understand the question. Are, uh, is, there, is there like a concern that there'd be too many routers, too many hops, and things like that? Yeah. So, you, you, you have that entity that you call a router, okay? Oh, and yes, And you yes. have your servers and your clients that are connected to that router, mm -hmm. to those routers, because there is many routers. Uh, and my question is, can I have as many routers as I have clients and servers? Yeah, there, there's, you could have that, yes. Yeah. You can. Right now, I think there's a hard limit, though. Let me preface yes. this, all right? So these are fairly heavyweight things. These are heavyweight in the terms of they're considered like parable to a broker. They're not micro uh, routers. Uh, they don't have the state that a broker has, and they do, you know, the, the, the whole routing protocol thing. Uh, but they're not something you can really embed anywhere. Um, so for like the MQTT, I think that's what you're, 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 were you talking about that? Did you mention that? Mm. No? Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so I just misheard. Um, <laughs> that's IoT. You can have, I know, it's been a long week. You can have, um, you could certainly have one, I, what we've been, what we're recommending at this point is one, dispatch router per data center in that kind of scale. Okay. Uh, so you'd have multiple clients, but you can scale out the net as, I think, as high as 128 routers. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they are somewhat con a connection concentrator, too. Okay. okay, thank you. Anything else? No? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for the questions. And thank you. Good night. Certainly, if you want to follow up with questions or criticisms or <laughs> ideas, let me pump this. Let's put my contact information up here. Okay. Thank you.